Well, we need him, don't we? Hey, you what? If you, you say, I don't need the Lord. Well, you're naive. And probably dumb, just to be honest with you. I was watching those ladies pray, and I thought about this. Um, people say, well, you know what? You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And they're absolutely accurate. But here, here's my question, all right? Why would you not use all of the tools that God has given you to be successful, right? I mean, he's given, he's given you his perfect word. We don't read it, right? A lot, a lot of times, let's be honest, in church, we're getting to the place churches don't preach his word, right? We, got, we just got to tell a little story to make people feel better. Uh, we have prayer, tool God gives us. We don't pray. I mean, we're probably the least praying people in this generation right and then God's given us the local church and you say well what what are you talking about the local church well what you saw and I'm not making I'm not making this a spectacle okay these ladies down here praying see you're not going to get that at home That's right, right? And pe people say and, and I'm not against this they'll post on social media uh, pray for this pray for this wonderful but there's something about your brothers and sisters in Christ gather around you and, and help helping bear your burden that you don't get when you don't come. And so um, that's why we need church. We need it for the, the preaching. Here's the thing. People say, well, I go to church to be fed. That sounds good, but what you're doing, you're telling on yourself. Because uh, the Bible said study to show thyself approved, right? Didn't say be fed, right? And so this this ought to be like the dessert. This ought to be this ought to be the dessert bar because you because you've eaten the meat and potatoes all week. <laughs> and so um, I'm thankful. I, I I believe that we need more prayer. We need more fellowship with each other. We need the Bible said we're to. It, it ought to be more as we see the day approaching, not less. Right. So uh, I want you to turn to Mark chapter number six. Mark chapter 6 uh, this, e this morning, and again, appreciate your prayers, still not 100%, but uh, better than I was, maybe, we'll see, and uh, I hadn't preached in a while, to, you know, I, I preached a funeral yesterday, and uh, I, that's not exactly the, the one type you want to preach, I'm, you know, but it does make it easier, I've preached uh, th two funerals the last couple weeks of saved folks, and that makes it a whole lot easier when you don't have to try to figure out something positive to say about them, right? I mean, at least you say they're in heaven, praise God. And uh, but uh, I'm glad to see you had a good. Uh, we had a big push uh, for this morning for our bus ministry. We started a new bus route. I think we had eight new riders on that particular route, and and then uh, others coming in. I appreciate all the hard work this month, and I believe it's worth it. I, I'm excited to see other churches. I was in a meeting. Uh, this past week uh, with another church and uh, a guy was wanting, they were starting a bus ministry and knew we had one and had uh, asked to see our policies and procedures. I sent him that and he said, we're having a, a meeting with our church and bus workers, would you come? And I said, sure. Well, then I got there and walked in the door and there's uh, sitting uh, Daryl Cox. And I looked at him, I said, brother, I said, that that's like asking somebody that just started playing the piano <laughs> Uh, to, to uh, be in the same room with Mozart. I said, that man's forgot more about the bus ministry than I even know. And so uh, he'd ask questions, Brother Cox, and he'd look at me and say, well, what do you think? I said, what he said, <laughs> right? I mean, just I, whatever he said, I'm with, right. amen. And uh, so I, I'm glad, but what I'm saying, I'm glad to see there's, there's some churches. I talked to a pastor yesterday. He said, we're, we're trying to get our bus ministry going again. That excites me because that, what's going to change this world is people come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Now look at Mark chapter 6 uh, this morning. I want to begin verse number 3 or verse number 30 and I want to go down to verse number 37. Now this is a special day for us again because we call it Roundup Sunday and uh, again we, we called it that because we want to, we, we care about you. If someone invited you to church this morning, it's not just because we're trying to have a big day, right? It's because they care about you. And that, that's what it's about. Listen, I, I don't, you'll notice we don't have attendance boards. Someone asked me, say, how many y'all run? I said, I have no idea because we don't have attendance. Well, I don't care how many you run. 
right? It's how many do you reach? We want to reach people with the gospel. And so uh, uh, you are invited, and this, this whole day is about you, right? And so I want to preach something that I hope will be a help to you this morning uh, in Mark chapter number 6. Now look at verse 30. The Bible said, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. That's a good place to be. And the Bible said, and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. So set the scene. Here's the apostles. They've been, they've been out working for the Lord, and they come to him. And, and uh, he said, Come apart unto me. And he didn't say we weren't going to work anymore. He said, come part unto me. And they'd been working, Brother Matt, to the point he said they had no leisure. I mean, this was 24-7. And, uh, boy, you talking about burnout. That's burnout, right? And, and so the Bible said uh, in verse 32, And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot uh, thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. That's important. Verse 34. And was moved with compassion. Your eye will always affect your heart. If you don't know lost people, you'll never have a burden for lost people. Right? If all you know is church people, you won't know the need. If you, 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 know, you didn't get excited, well, praise God, eight new riders on that bus. That's because you've not been on a bus route to see uh, the burden. Amen. And so the Bible said they, uh, the people saw them and many knew him. Well, then, verse 34, when he came, he saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because, notice this, they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. And he answered and said unto them, He said, Give ye them to eat. Now, now think what he's saying. They're, they just told him, said, Lord, we're out here in the desert place where uh, they need to go back and buy them something to eat. And he looks at them and says, you give them something to eat. You give them something. And they're going, wait a minute. You're not listening to us, right? Sometimes, how many, how many, how many know this? Sometimes you pray and you're like, God, you're not listening to me. But what, he, what he's giving you is a better way, right? Our, your ways are not his ways and our ways are not his ways. And so therefore he said, listen, Maybe you, need to, maybe you need to get more in tune with what I'm trying to tell you. And that's what he's telling these disciples or these apostles. And, and he answered and said unto them in verse 37, Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Now here, here's the, the creator of the universe. They've seen him do miracles. They've seen him do things that no ordinary man can do. And their question to him is not, Lord, are you going to do something miraculous? It's like, do you want us to, in our own power to go do what we can do instead of relying? You know what she just saying? Is that. They're saying, what do we got to do? And he's saying, give them to eat. And they're like, well, we don't have anything to eat. But you've got the one that, you've got the bread of life. You've got, you've got the Savior of the world. You've got the Creator. You've got the Messiah that they were looking for, and he's saying, I'm him, and they're going, yeah, but you don't understand. They don't have anything to eat. And what I want to share with you this morning is this thought. He is the satisfaction for every need you've got. Man, we, we, we look at the, the mountains, and we're thinking, well, they need bread, and they need water, and they need food, and they need diapers, and they need all, and they do. Their physical need are those things. And we look at this world and we're thinking of all the things. We look at different countries and they need food and they need shelter and they need medicine. But here's the one thing. I don't know who you are and I don't know many of your burdens. I don't know many of your needs. But here's what I do know. Every one of us has a spiritual need that can only be satisfied with the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, He is the answer. He is the satisfaction to every need you've got. If you're lonely, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you're sick, he's the great physician. 
Amen. I mean, I mean, whoever you are, but what caught my eye in this scripture is that one phrase. He said they were wandering, uh, trying to find the answer to all their questions, and they were a sheep not having a shepherd. And that's, that's where we are today. Everybody, Brother Matt, is going to their own corner. I, I'm a follower of this guy. I'm a follower of that. I, I'm, you know, this is my, this is my uh, ideology. This is mine. If we could only get this guy in office, if we could only keep this guy from getting in office, if, if, if I could just get this job, whatever it is, we all have in our mind a physical way that we could meet our own need. Yet God has placed in everybody a spiritual hole that only he himself can fill. And you can put all the stuff you want to in there, but it'll never fill it, right? And so in the day we live, it seems that we are all wandering around trying to find our way. You turn on the news. You know what's amazing to me? Brother Matt, they're focusing on everything except this, this, this thing in, in the mountains of North Carolina. Think about this. They're, they're focused on it. I mean, the local, it's like, we have a physical need in our own state. Football didn't change. Baseball didn't change. Politics didn't change. A lot of, a lot of our lives didn't change. We went to fairs and we went to all this. What I'm saying is it's like we're, we're just wandering around. Everybody's just wandering around. You know? Just wandering around. May I say this? There's coming a day. I, uh, listen. Do you realize how unique and unusual what took place in our mountains is? I mean, you expect a hurricane to destroy the coast. You don't expect it to go up into the mountains of North Carolina. I remember Hurricane Hugo kind of came up through uh, uh, Charleston. Remember that? That's a whole different path than this one. This one came up through Florida and did all this stuff and got, it seemed like it got over the mountains of North Carolina and just stayed there and destroyed it. Friend, they have cut off western North Carolina. Devastation. And I say all that to say this. It ought to, it ought to wake us up. I, I was looking at pictures, Brother Sham, going, this is unbelievable. But you know what people do? They're just going with their life. Hey, football's today. My team's going to win. You know, uh, the President's Cup, I'm going to watch that. And hey, tomorrow i got to go to work. And we're, we're going to go on about our lives. Well, that's the way they were. It hadn't changed. People hadn't changed over all, these, all this time. It's like, well, that's bad. But i got to worry about me. Right? And, and so we carry burdens and worry and heartache and discouragement. And Jesus saw that in his day as well. And, and so I want to set the scene. These people should have been filled with hope. All through the Old Testament, the prophets are talking about this Messiah. And Jesus fulfilled every prophecy pointing to the Messiah. Yet they looked at him. They didn't have hope. Man, may I say this? We look and we look at the cross of Calvary that Jesus died in. Praise God. Brother Shane, we've got eternal life. We, we've got victory in Jesus. Yet I see people that say they know Jesus Christ that have no hope. We ought, to have, we ought to be the most hopeful, joyous people there are. Well, you don't understand all that I'm going. I, I went to that funeral yesterday and I saw a celebration of life. Why? Because this, listen, this is the worst. If you're saved by the grace of God, this life is the worst you've ever got it. Amen. So, so they, they're oppressed, they're poor, they're being ruled by the enemy, they're looking for answers and they come to Jesus. They don't even really know who he is, uh, but, but they, they're wandering trying to find the answer to all their questions. And that one phrase, they were a sheep not having a shepherd. They need to be round up. They need to be brought in. And that's what today's about. It's about bringing people in. It's about bringing you to the Savior. It's about introducing you to the one that can change your life. I can't change it. Well, Jimmy probably could, but well, Shane probably, Brother Johnny probably could. But, but ultimately, when it comes to heaven and hell, eternity, he's the only one that's going to change your life. 
And so we're, we're still wandering like sheep without a shepherd even today with all the technology, with all the advancements of life, with all the, with all the things we look at that were so much better off than they were 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Look at their day. They didn't have running water. Well, at least we got running water. But I don't know that we're any different. So let me give you three things I see in this scripture. Number one, he recognized their exhaustion. I mean, I, I believe that this Bible is God's word, 100%. I, I'm convinced. There's no, there's no maybe so, possibly so. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind that what we have is God's word. So in verse 30, the Bible said, The apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. They departed into a desert place by ship privately. So, so he recognized their exhaustion. And I'll say this, the day we live, people are exhausted. I mean, I can look at your face this morning. I'm not being critical. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm this way too. We're, we're exhausted, right? We're, it's like there's no leisure time. There's no, there's no downtime. Right? Used to, you, Brother Dennis, you'd go to work, you'd work your 8, 10, 12 hours, whatever it is, you'd come home, you'd eat supper, and, and you'd, you know, you just relax. Sunday afternoons, how many remember this? You'd go to church, you'd eat lunch, you'd sit on the porch, right? You'd relax. Now it's like, well, you know, in between services today, I, there, I, go, I go to Walmart, I get this done, I get this done, I, I've got, here's my to-do list, i got to get it all done. Then I'm going to try to make it back to church, and then after church, i got this, and i got to, you know, i got to get my social media score, i got to do all this, and i got this, I got this app where me and my buddies, if I don't check in, I don't get points. And we're wondering why we sit in church exhausted. Man, this ought to be a time where we're rejoicing, praising God. And it's like, well, we'll just endure it. We'll just endure it till we get to lunch. And, you know, tonight, eh, probably not, preacher. See, he reckoned, well, what, what, what was it about these people? Well, first of all, he, they were workers. The Bible said the apostles gathered themselves and they, they told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. So they weren't sitting back going, you know what, Lord, I'm just... I'm just so exhausted. I, I just I can't go any farther. I'm I'm getting ready to quit. Right? That wasn't where, they were working. They were out knocking on doors. They were running bus routes. They were they were teaching Sunday school. They were they were part of the youth ministry. They were they were playing instruments. They were practicing in the choir. They were doing all those things. But they were tired. And some of you, you're like preacher. I, Listen, I'm involved in 47 ministries and I've got all these organizations outside of church and I'm working 12 hours. I, I understand. Please, I understand. But he understands. He understands. And so the disciples were involved in ministry. They were laboring for the Lord. They had seen miraculous things, yet they were tired. I'm tired. I told Miss Ellen, I said, I, I'm going to take this past week, this past week, Sunday. Of course, you know I wasn't here. I laid out. I said, like, I got to go to church this week. They might fire me. <laughs> but I still wasn't feeling well. And so I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to unplug this whole week. I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything Monday morning. Get a call. Preacher, my wife's very sick. Would you come over? Well, Brother Johnny, I'm not going to say, no, I'm unplugged this week, sorry. So I went over. Spent some time, right? I'm, please, don't be, I'm not complaining. I'm using this as an example that, that you can try to unplug, but you're still involved, right? And so we're never completely, I was like, well, I'm just, it's just that one thing, though, right? I can, rest of the week, I'm going to unplug. 
right? It happens to you too, right? I'm not, I'm not on an island by myself. You're involved in stuff in your life too, and you're just like, if I could, if I just had some time to get away and emotionally recharge, I'd be, well, that's where they were, right? So what I'm saying is you're not on an island by yourself. People are involved the same thing. I mean, hey, uh, I thought about this. Last week we were up in Waynesville. What if we'd been there this week? They were tired. You're tired. You're here today and you say, well, I'm not part of the ministry preacher. Yeah, but you're tired. Number two, there was not only workers, there were worshipers. In verse 32, the Bible said they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Well, why'd they do that? Because they had private time with the Lord. These disciples had gone away with the Lord and uh, it wasn't about the ministry then. Jesus said, come on, go with me. They got in a boat and they went with him. You know what? That's wonderful. You need that, but there's still demands. They had private time. How many, don't raise your hand, but here's what I want to tell you. If you don't have private time with the Lord, you will get exhausted. You will burn out. See, the ministry doesn't quit because we're tired. Working for the Lord doesn't quit because we're tired. You better find a way to get along with God. Have your private time in prayer and Bible study and realize that that's how you get recharged. You're never going to get fully unplugged from anything, praise God. You go on a vacation if you want to, but I'll tell you what, it, 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 I'm good with it. I like them, but praise God, you know what? All the problems are still there when you get back. They recognized who he was. Let me ask you this. Have you done that? Have you ever asked him to be your savior? Do you know Jesus is your savior? Do you know he's the sustainer of life? That he is, he is everything you need? If you've never recognized him as that, may I say today would be a good day to do that because you, you can't rest enough on your own. You can't get unplugged. There's not enough cabins in the mountains or places at the beach. Praise God. This is my happy place. Look at the sand. Look at the ocean. Praise God for that. But you can't stay there. You're going to have to get back in the fight at some time. So here he is, he's saying, listen, come with me, right? You've labored, you're tired, come with me. You better find some private time with the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. You better learn how to do that as well. They were still weary though. And then there were the wanderers and the wanderers. Notice what the Bible says here. It says that the people saw them departing in verse 33, and many knew him and ran afoot thither unto, out of the, all cities and out went them and they came together unto him. So here's those that are wondering about him, but they were also wandering. That's the ones he's talking about. They were sheep uh, with no shepherd. You may be here today and you're saying, I, I, I don't know who this Jesus you're talking about is. Then you're a wanderer. But you may be here today and you're just, you're frazzled. Nothing's going right. Then you're a wanderer, right? And I'm not critical because let's be honest, there's some people here today including me sometimes. The Bible said all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all wandered at some point in time. Maybe you're here today and you're wandering. You're not where you used to be with God. Now I say, it would be a good day to get back. Get back with him privately. So number one, he recognized their exhaustion. He's aware. Isn't that amazing that we serve a Savior that has... But he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. He, he's, he, he was weary like you are. There were times he had to get away. Amen. So number one, he recognized their exhaustion. Number two, he responded with exposition. Look at verse 34. The Bible said, Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. But it didn't stop there. The Bible said, and was moved with compassion towards them. Now, here's what I want to say to begin with. The modern day idea of compassion is not biblical compassion. See, we, we, we look at compassion today as pity. Oh, I, and feeling sorry for people. Oh, I feel sorry for them. I have so much compassion for them. But your Bible says this, some having compassion making a difference. See, true compassion makes a difference. True compassion is doing something about it. True compassion is seeing the need and meeting the need. And the Bible said here, he was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. Notice this, and he began to teach them many things. Here's what I'll share with you. Number one, in his 
he responded, well, what do you mean by exposition? He responded with his word. Everything you'll ever need is in that Bible, right? You need comfort, it's in there. You need correction, it's in there. You need salvation, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You need, Hey, you need financial advice, it's in there. You need marital advice, right there. Hey, you need help in your parenting, moms and dads, bam. You want to know how to be a good child, young person, bam, it's in there. Everything you need is contained in that book. So when Jesus had compassion, he responded not with sympathy as in, oh, I feel bad for you guys. He responded with the word of God. And that's what we need today. Brother Bart, listen, we're in a day where it's like, well, we don't want to preach the word of God. It might offend someone. You ever thought maybe the word of God can help them and bring comfort and correction and get them on the right path? The word of God has never done anything wrong to hurt anybody. It's always helped. And I don't know why we don't preach it. I don't know why we don't just... Look at God's word and say, here's what it says. It will always help. It will never hurt. Amen. So who did he respond to? First of all, the crowd. Notice the Bible said he, he saw much people. Well, who are these people? Well, there's many people. But also it's diverse people with different problems. It was different people. It was men, women, boys, girls, different races. They all had different issues. and different. They didn't all come with the same problem. Yet he gave them, you're here this morning and you've all got different problems. They're different than mine. But it's amazing what God can do with the word of God. Because you'll walk out of here, I promise you, you'll walk out here today and every one of you are going to hear something different. I remember one time I preached on tithing. And I kid you not, somebody walked out and said, the preacher has the best message on the cross I'd ever heard. I'm like, wonderful. Right? And they were, they were in tune, Brother Junior. It wasn't like they were asleep. But for whatever reason, God used that message and used his word to speak totally different to that person than other people. And God will do that. Listen, this morning, I don't know what you need, but what I'm saying is God understands you that you're an individual and you're a different. And this Bible is good for the whole crowd. Man, you don't have to change it. You don't have to manufacture it. You don't have to doctor it. All you do is read it. Amen. All we got to do is preach it. And so there's so many. Listen, all of you are different here. Different backgrounds, different needs. But I'm glad that he can meet every need you've got. See, so, so there was the crowd, but then the condition. Now notice the Bible said in verse 34 uh, that they were, not, they were sheep as sheep not having a shepherd. What's well, interesting, sheep, when you study that, sheep are followers. They need a shepherd. We love Psalms 23, the Lord is what? My shepherd. Well, if, if you've got a shepherd, you know what you need? Some sheep, right? I'm not the shepherd. I'm the under shepherd. But he's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. Right, he, He's the one really that, that ought to be lead. Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. So Paul was saying, I, listen, I'm nobody. Apollos is nobody. You ought to follow Jesus. Any man that will try to rob Jesus of his rightful place, you shouldn't follow. Man, I don't care if you follow me. I, this funeral, this guy, this pastor called me and said, listen, how do you want to be listed in the bulletin? I said, I don't care. He said, well, I know you worked hard during your doctorate and all that. I said, I said listen, bro, I could care less about that. I said, just don't put me in there. I don't care. I don't care, folks. Listen, it doesn't matter. When I talk to this pastor about this, this uh, uh, helping in North Carolina, I, I don't care about the credit, right. right? There's going to be people and there's going to be churches and there's going to be places and be like, well, we've got to do it with our church because we want to get the credit and, we want, and they're going to post all this stuff. It's not about that. Amen. If God doesn't get glory, it doesn't matter. Right? So the sheep are followers. That's who we are. We're followers. And so they were helpless and unable to defend themselves. That's why we need a shepherd. You're no match for Satan. You're no match for this world. You're no match for the enemy. Listen, we're no match for our own selves. My greatest enemy is me. It's not you. It's not the Baptists. It's not the Pentecostals or the Presbyterians. It's not the Democrats. It's not the liberals. My worst enemy is me. I look in the mirror, I cause me more trouble than any of you ever do. Yes, sir. 
Amen. So, so his condition, the condition of the people, they're unable to provide for themselves. Psalms 23, where does he lead them? Besides still waters, green pastures. They couldn't find it without the shepherd. Listen, you couldn't get to heaven without Jesus this morning. All of us are bound for hell until you meet Jesus. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He's the only way. Well, if, he, if he's good enough for you to trust him for eternity, he ought to be good enough for you to trust him for your daily bread. Daily bread. Listen, if you don't eat this morning, I know we're Baptists, so if you don't eat for about five minutes, you think you're starving to death. But if you can trust him for eternity, you can trust him for your daily bread. Brother, we just sang, why worry when we can pray? They're unable to provide for this. Is what Jesus is looking, he's seeing these people, he's seeing their sheep with no shepherd. God, God help us. You know what you see out there? Sheep with no shepherd. You know what you're seeing in this sin cursed world? You're looking at all this stuff with the, you know, we're talking about the school board and, you know, you can't tell. I mean, you got a, somebody running for vice president's putting tampons in boys' bathrooms and you got people saying, well, don't tell the parents if they want uh, what they want to be identified as. You know what? They're, we're looking at sheep with no shepherd. Right. Laws aren't going to fix that stuff. Jesus Amen. is. And we're running around. And we, let me say this we all do all we can to, to stand up for what's right. But ultimately, I want to say this. You know I mean? I'll tell you whose fault all this is. Look in the mirror. We've sat in our four walls of our churches just like this. And pastors have stood behind the pulpit just like that. And they'll preach against everything. But out there is where it needs to be heard. Out there is where things need to be changed. We can't sit in here and complain about what's out there when we've done nothing to, do, to, to change it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're we're the condition of what we're seeing. That this world needs a shepherd. They need the great shepherd. They need Jesus Christ. They don't need a Baptist shepherd or Pentecostal or Methodist. They just need the shepherd. And so the condition then you see is compassion. He began to teach them many things. That's what your Bible said. Well, maybe having compassion on people is lovingly. Speaking the truth to them. Right. See, we like that truth part. We just we forget about the rest of the verse. Right. Yes. Speaking the truth in love. Well, I just believe in tough love. I was, stu I was studying this week. Man, I'll tell you what. If you will study your Bible, God will mess your theology up. What I mean by that is you go in this way. I believe I was taught this and taught this and taught this. And then you go in there and start studying your Bible. And God's like, mm-mm, you're way off. You, you missed it. I was studying Romans this week. You had the, you had the Jewish converts. Then you had the, you had the pagan converts. And they, they were arguing. The Jewish converts were upset with the pagans. No, the pagans were upset with the Jews because they were eating stuff. I mentioned this the other night. They were offered to idols. They were buying it in the market. And they are going, well, they shouldn't be eating that stuff. It was offered to idols. Well, they didn't offer to idols. And then the, the other group was looking at them and said, well, they're not observing the days like they should. They're not good Christians. And Paul blew them all out. He's like, first of all, Christianity is not about what you eat and what you don't eat. It's not in observance of days. It is, it is a relationship with Christ. And here's what he said. Now, Brother Bart, here's how, here's how. Now, if I were to tell you, if I, now, hang with me now, because some of you, I'm going to lose you. you you've, been, you've been independent Baptist your whole life. If I were to tell you, if I took two people and I said, well, these people right here believe they can eat and drink and do whatever they want. I ain't talking about immoral stuff all right so don't time out I, I ain't gone off the deep end but they're they're governed by that the holy spirit and and in other words you know 
I, I, well, you know, if you don't wear a white shirt to church, that's sin. Or facial hair. You know what I'm saying? We, I've lived with that. Many of you have. And we, you know, wire rim glasses were a big thing. And, you know, some, even some of the music that we consider conservative today, years ago, would be like, well, tough. And we always thought they, those were the strong Christians, right? That's not what Paul said. He said the ones that could eat what they wanted to and ones that had liberty. Paul said they were the strong Christians. Last I checked, Brother Foy, Paul was just writing down what the Lord told him to write down. But see, in our mind, the stricter you are, the more you love Jesus. And I ain't talking about living gross immoral sin, so don't get... Don't get like preaching, you know, he's had ear infections and blood pressure and he's gone contemporary liberal. That's not me. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. And the whole idea was that you ought not be judging that dude for what he, he's doing, what he's not doing. You ought to look in the mirror. That's what the whole thing is. And he said, listen, that when you do that, you know what happens? You don't judge another man but all of a sudden see uni unity and uniformity is not the same thing right. we don't have, all have to look the same I mean honestly years ago brother Sh I wouldn't let him sing in the choir I'd be like you don't have to cut that thing <laughs> right but God's taught me some stuff that, that beard don't make him love or not love Jesus That's anymore right. right brother Shane the time I've known him, he, he loves the Lord as much, if not more, than anybody I know. So again, you better be careful, and that, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes our idea of compassion is either, oh, you poor baby, or ah, you need to get right with God, and if you wouldn't do this, and, and some of you even, and some of you now, you look at this flood, you're going, the reason is because all them mountain towns are wicked. Right. Maybe, but you ain't the Holy Spirit. Now, if we're honest, God ought to destroy the whole country. That's right. That's right. California, as wicked as they are, to fall off the ocean. So should North Carolina. Right. Amen. Right. See, the compassion he began to teach them many things. The reason I want to get up here and, and just preach the word of God to you is because I care. Because I care. He, he gave them answers from his word. You come to my office, you say, preacher, I need some counseling. We're going to the Bible. You don't, want it, you don't want that, probably don't want my counsel. So number two, he, he responded with exposition. He responded with the word of God. And then number three, quickly, I'm, I know what time it is. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. He responded with expression. Notice what he did. Verse 35, he said, When the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Right. So he said, they said, listen, Lord, I think we're going to have compassion on them. We're going to cut church service a little short. So they got plenty of time to get back in there and buy themselves something to eat. Right? right. That's what he said. That, that's in there. Well, here's what the Lord said. And he answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. Give them to eat. They're like, we don't have anything. And they say, shall we go and buy 200 uh, penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Here's what it said in verse 30. How many loaves have ye? They said five and five loaves, two fishes. So here's, here's really what he's doing. Okay, he was, A lot of folks think their compassion is verbal. Right? Oh, I'm praying for you. Let's all pray for Western North Carolina. Let's pray for them. Right? Nothing wrong with that. But he took it farther. Let's pray for the bus ministry. Let's pray for our missionaries. Nothing wrong with praying. We should pray. But you'll notice he responded with an expression of his compassion. Wasn't enough, he just spoke to them. He gave them strength and weariness. What I mean by that, the Bible said the day was far spent. 
So he understood they were tired, they were hungry, they were in need of something, they were tired and thirsty and hungry, and he said, all right, we're going to fix it, fellas, right. right? Then he gave them water and dryness. They were in a desert place, they were in a dry place, and he provided refreshment. And then, not only that, he gave them nourishment and weakness. He, he gave them to eat. And can't you see, we know the story, we know the miracle. Five loaves, two fishes, and he, here's what he did though. He first gave to the disciples to give to them. Yes, sir. Right? He didn't get to the disciples, all right, boys, y'all sit down and eat first. He gave to them to give to them. And then when everybody was done eating, he said, all right, there's some baskets full of food. Y'all take that home with you. God ain't going to let you starve. But again, let's go back to the example I gave. Oh, let's pray for Western North Carolina. Okay. But if they're hungry... And you have the means to give them food. Yes, sir. Come on now. You ought to give them food. Yes, sir. Right. Well, you got Bible for that? Read the book of James. That's right. Yes, sir. right? So we're going to help them. And if you can help, help. Yes, sir. They don't say, well, I, don't, I can't help. I don't have the money. And you roll up. Next thing I know, you got to post it. Look at my new iPhone 16 Pro Max. Right? Right? Look at this new car we just bought. Good. We're at nineteen thousand million dollars, right? right. Amen. Jesus, is like, all right, we're going to feed them. They're like, what? Well, with what? I'm going to give to you, yes, so you can give to them. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm going to nourish you, yes. so you can nourish them. Yes. Right. I'm going to strengthen you, so you can strengthen them. Notice you go all the way back to the first verse. They were alone with him to be nourished. And, but right. see, here's the thing. Here, here's what we've got good at. There's two camps in the Baptist church. There's the worshiping camp and the working camp. Oh, we love to work. We come to church to worship God. We want to shout and run the aisles and jump off pews and hang from the rafters. Wonderful. Then there's the other crew that's like, work, you got to work, run buses and knock on doors and you know, all you ever see, you had 14,000 saved this Sunday, but you only got 12 in your church. What happened to worshiping and working? God didn't call you just to worship. Because one day when we get to heaven, we'll worship him better than we ever will here in this, this defiled body we got. But he saved us to worship and to work. And so here... These disciples got along with him, Brother Jimmy, and, and they were weary, and you're weary, and you're here today and say, I'm just tired, preacher, I want to give up and quit, and I don't know if I can go on. That's where they were. Good. And the Lord said, come here. Amen. Get around me a little bit, Amen. right? Let me, let me nourish you. Let me, let me help you. Yes. And they came to him, and then all these people saw him and started coming to Jesus. Isn't that what I, that's what I want around here. Right. I don't want to have uh, five years from now, I don't want this same crowd. I don't Walls knocked out and buildings put up and buses running all down. You say, preacher, now we're in 2024 and that's not going to happen. Huh? Right. Hello? Right. What God are you serving? Right? right? Yes. See, you're depending on yourself to get Praise the fish. The Lord. You're depending on you. So what he's saying is, listen, you come here. Let me help you out a little bit. Get you where you need to be. Now look at all them people coming. I can see their faces. What are we going to do with them? We're going to take care of them. Wait, whoa, whoa. We don't, have, we don't have the resources. We don't have the money. Groceries are too high. Taxes are too high. Right? I mean, I mean, do you not see the economy, how bad it is? Do you not understand how, how yeah, right? But I thought we served a different God. Right? I thought we served a God that could supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. That's what we say, Brother Foy. Now it's time to put the, put the shoe leather on the 
the faith we have. Faith without works is satisfaction. Good, God can meet every need you got, but he does it so you can meet the needs of other people. You just got to figure out what your need is. Come to him. Get help with. If you're here today, you don't know him as your savior, there's your need. If you're here today and you're walking far from him, you're discouraged and downtrodden, there's your need. But he, did, he doesn't meet your need just so you can, well, I feel better now. There's a multitude out there, much people, much people, much people that need him. And we're his ambassadors. He is the satisfaction for every need you've got. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Thank you.